Hello and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Today we're going to be taking a look at three funny off-meta builds. Don't really have enough going on to make their own video out of, but they're builds that I've used and that I've done some research on. So my first build is my Shield Poke Ant Shield build. Now if you've never heard of Ant Skull Plate, you've probably picked it up. It's just on the surface a very bad Great Shield. And indeed, if you're looking at PvP, it is a horrible Great Shield. However, it has some unique parameters about it that I was looking through and found some interesting stuff with. So, for extra life, and most players will call this hardness. Hardness isn't actually a term used in Elden Ring. The Prams call it guard base repel and or guard defense flick power rate. So it's they're two separate things, but the common knowledge for hardness, at least in terms of PvP, is defense flick power and guard defense flick power. And so Ant Skull Plate isn't useful in PvP. It doesn't have a extra hardness as Extra Life claims. I will be getting around to updating that page soon. In PvE, however, it has a special guard base repel that is higher than the other Great Shields. Now what that means is the guard attack rate for which enemies are attacking your guard to bounce off of your shield is different compared to Great Shields, right? So there are 331 attacks that use 80, which is what the Ant Skull Plate is, and 532 for 70, and then 995 that are 60 and under. So. The guard base repel on the attack guard rate is what factors it in for PvE, and you'll have an extra 330 attacks to bounce off the shield. How useful that is, is really up to you. If you're going for a guard counter build, it can be marginally more useful. And just to put that in perspective, so 18% of attacks that can bounce off is only able to do so off the end head shield. Again, not terribly useful, but it's good to know, and if you wanted to make a guard counter build, it might be something you would factor. Most bosses use 99 guard attack rate, so it's not really useful against bosses, but if you're going against regular enemies, it can be something you can have. I did use this in PvP. It's fine. It's a great shield that doesn't have no skill, so it's obviously more of a detriment than helpful, but it's still viable in PvP, just because it's a great shield. If you want to increase your hardness as the community calls it for pvp as for ant skull plate or any great shield you would have to use barricade shield because that has a multiplier to the guard defense flick rate now if you wanted to talk about the other version of hardness which wiki just calls hardness again very confusing terms because they don't really understand the params defense flick power is something that affects like say dragon bolt's blessing a body buff. So if you attack a weapon, attack with a weapon, it'll bounce off if the defense attack power is too low. Now as for the actual build that I'm using, this is 139. It's one of the few 139 builds I've actually played. I have 60 vigor, base mind, 33 endurance, 79 strength, and 13 dexterity, so I can wield Clean Rot Knight Sword and still have optimal scaling with it. For the weapons, I have the Clean Rot Knight Sword with Flintstone Phalanx, that is by far the best setup you can have when using a Shield Poke build. And obviously for the Great Shield, I have the Ant Skull Plate. If you wanted to bring this into PvP, I would highly recommend using the Helic Tree Crest Great Shield, it is far better, and can have Ashes of War applied to it. For the Talismans, I don't have much going on there. I have the Green Turtle Talisman, the Verdian Amber Medallion, Earth Tree's Favor, and Great Shield Talisman. A more optimal Talisman setup would probably be swapping Green Turtle for Crimson Amber and swapping Verdian Amber for Spear Talisman. However, I this is the first time I've used Shield Poke since the nerf and so I wasn't sure how bad the stamina damage and stamina rate is with Great Shields on this patch so that's why I had more stamina boosting gear. For the armor, I have the Imp Head Wolf to boost my endurance, getting that up to 33. The Beast Champion Armor Altered, 
Astrologist Gloves and Omen Greaves for a total of 71 poise, and so that will make me able to tank one hand thrusting swords, because if you can't tank that, you're pretty screwed. The next build I want to showcase is this Dishonest Dueling build. It's not a great build, obviously it's forced light roll and it's forced cockroach mode. If you were to be optimal about it, you would have a additional setup that you would use until you get low HP then swap to this, as most top tier players do. That being said, it's very easy to play, even in this unoptimal state, that you could go around arena killing anyone you'd like with very little difficulty, as long as you play passive. You see, this build is focused all around regen, and especially regen at low HP. The Icon Shield, Blessed Dew Talisman, and the Royal Remains set all do 2 HP every second. Royal Remains only when you're below 18% health. So, you will always be regening your health. And with the Light Roll and Bloodhound Step, you should never be punished by any attack. Or if you do, you should be able to escape any Vortex that the enemy places you in. This build is also at 139, because why not? If you're being dishonest, you can go above the meta level. If you were to make this at 125, you would lose Icon Shield and take some points out of Endurance. The trade-off, 2 HP a second. We have 60 Vigor, 58 Endurance, 52 Strength, and 13 Dexterity. You'll want to two-hand the Green Art Knight Sword to get 78 Strength, and because the two-hand moveset is better than the one-hand moveset. For weapons, we have the Green Art Knight Sword with Bloodhound Step. This is heavily advised that you use Rock Grease to continue pressuring your opponent, even if you are playing more passive. Then we have the Icon Shield for the passive regen. For Talismans, we have the Great Jar's Arsenal, the Crimson Amber Medallion, Earth Tree's Favor, and the Blessed Dew Talisman. This ensures maximum survivability outside of swapping to the Blue Feather Branch Sword. For armor, obviously we have the Royal Remains set. And for the final build, this is a tournament winner build that somehow works because Frosty is very good at PvP. This build is also at 139 just to showcase how it might work if you really wanted to optimize for it. So Great Stars has a effect where on hit you heal 1% of your health. This also applies to any Ashivor you put on it. So Poise Dismissed, a Ashivor that ticks multiple times, can heal you very quickly, as seen in this clip. And offhand Wakizashi is very good on Arcane build. Because Great Stars is so slow, you want to swap to Wakizashi against anything fast. It's not very good in Arena. In a smaller, competitive Arena, it is actually pretty viable. For being Great Stars, that is. So, for the build. We have 60 of Air, 15 Endurance, 22 Strength, 56 Dexterity, and 45 Arcane and the Great Stars is going to be Poison Infused with Poisonous Mist. You could also do this on a pure Arcane build, however I wanted to optimize for Wakizashi, and so I decided to go with a Blood or Poison build, which is a Dexterity Arcane hybrid. As for Wakizashi, we have the Blood Wakizashi. Even on a pure Arcane build, Blood is optimal because you can tier skip. Which isn't really relevant in Coliseum because you can't use Crystal Tears, but in competitive PvP, people will use the Crimson Whirl Bubble Tier, or Crimson Bubble Tier, whichever one restores your HP when you drop below 20% or whatever it is. And so, Wakizashi can actually tier skip and just instantly kill them using Bleed. And that's kind of the core of this whole build. You poison them with Bright Stars, and if you need to regen, you use Poise Dismissed, hopefully stand in it. And as I said, in Coliseum, doesn't really work like that because people can just backpedal. And then you finish them off with Wakazashi. Overall, a more competitive build than you would think, but still not that competitive. For the Talismans, we have the Crimson Amber Medallion, Urtree's Favor, 
Kindred or Rot's Exaltation and Gold Rot's Talisman. For the armor, we have the Albaner Mask. And personally, I would use the Kindred or Rot's Crown simply for the additional poison buff. The Malcium Knight Armor, Altered, Godsky Noble Bracelets, and Crucible Greaves for 71 poise. Again, don't want to get fucked up by Thrusting Swords. And that's basically the entire build. You're just trying to regen any HP you've lost and poison them and then put pressure on them with the Wakazashi.